Now we're going to add these bushings all over this thing, and since we have one, the others should go much faster. Go to Constrain, or just right-click and choose Constrain, and we're going to switch to a Flush Constraint. So I'm going to take the front of this and say that it has to line up with the front of this here. I don't know where that went. I think it actually... Did it overlap? Oh, there it is. Okay. After we have that selected, uh, we can go all the way to the edge with this, which is where I think I want to go. I'm going to say Constrain, use a Tangent Constraint. We're going to take that inside cylinder there and have it made up with this wall here. So if I have my screws, that's where the edge of the screw is going to go. And this is almost ready, but it can still spin. So I'm going to go Constrain, Flush Constraint. I want the top of this to be flat and level with the thing next to it. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. So I'm going to say a Mate Constraint with the back flat side of this and the front side of this. Then we'll use a flush constraint to say that the top has to line up with the top from the other side, and that one of these sides here, doesn't matter which one, as long as the arrows point the same direction, line up with the arrows on the other side. Okay, so that is locked in place, and we're going to continue doing that for this other side here. So I'm going to grab another one, switch this to mate, click on the flat part, so you should see the whole thing outlined in red. Click on the flat part here. That snaps it in place. We're going to use a flush constraint to set the height. So I want the height of that and the height of this to be the same. And then I'm going to use a tangent constraint on that column, the inside column. So to do that, I need to rotate my screen just a little bit so I can see that flat edge right there. I'm going to go back to right-click, Constrain. There's my tangent. That flat part with that circular part, and apply. The last one, let's go back to a home view, is right here. I'm going to use my mate, I'm sorry, my flush constraint to say that this edge and this edge line up with each other. At the height and the height line up with each other. And that the front and the front line up with each other. Make sure you click apply. And all of these should be locked in place, and that should be all five of them. Okay, we're going to go on to putting this gear onto our axle here. So I'm going to grab that, hold down Alt first, click and drag that little nubby bit over. And then we're going to do the exact same thing again with one of these shaft collars. So I'm going to grab the nubby, drag it on top and let go. Uh, we're going to do the same kind of thing here, uh, but I have to use one of these shafts. I'm going to use the longest one to go through this. And let's see, how should I do this? Let's just put this gear on here first. So I'm going to hold down Alt, click and drag that on top, and then if I click this, it'll highlight on my left-hand browser bar, hit the plus sign, hit the plus sign again so I'm inside the origin, and I'm going to grab that z-axis and say that I'm doing a, a mate constraint with my z-axis and with this round part of the gear. So that axis lines up as well. Hit apply, and I have to do one more constraint to it. So I'm just going to pull it all the way out so I can see. I just have to get one of these sides to line up with the side over here. 
socket. That should make it to where that fits nicely. And we'll continue the rest in a new video.